Elizabeth Arnott is Head of Communications and Corporate Services for Irish Water. Good evening to you, Elizabeth. Good evening, Matt. Why this four-page form or document, please? Well, I suppose we are in the process of um, of implementing the government direction of the 6th of May, which set out very clearly that uh, in two particular areas for customers, very important areas, that every household in the country is entitled to 30,000 litres of water for free and every child under 18 in the country will receive their water for free. So we need to make sure that, first of all, we are in contact with our customers to make sure that they get the allowances that they're entitled to. We also need to make sure that we um, we confirm the details of customers so that they're getting the right bill for the services that they have. So if you have wastewater and water services, then you get billed for both of those. But if you have one or other, you should only get a half bill. And if you have neither, then you shouldn't get a bill at all. So we need to confirm the details of people so that we send the right type of bill um, and that also we have the details that we can apply the appropriate level of allowances to people. I'm very interested in what you said there. You said about the 30,000 free allowance per person. But when you mentioned children... Per household. Per household, sorry. And then when you mentioned children... You didn't mention anything about what the government had announced. Well, the thirty-eight. Government the government oh, announced sorry, the thirty-eight thousand litres, and oh, it was reported in that Irish. Litres. Yeah, the, the Irish Times reported this morning that you've put in an application to the energy regulator to reduce that thirty-eight thousand. Is that well, true? I think that the the children's allowance was, um, as announced by the government, was that every child was to be free, um, and that was to be provided for by an allocation of up to thirty-eight thousand litres. Now, what up we're to and you've process, decided that's too much, have you? Well, we're in a process now to determine what that level should be. If we get it wrong, and if it's too low, then children will be paying for water that they shouldn't be paying for. If we get it too high, then adults living with children will also get water for free. Now, that in itself, you might say, isn't an issue, but for people who don't have children in the household, and that's people with adult children still living at home, old age pensioners, single occupancy households, or households with just adults, they would end up paying too much. So we're in a process whereby we're trying to determine what is the best level to set that at. But you've set a figure, haven't you? In that application to the Commission for Energy Regulation, you set the figure at, it is reported, 21,000 litres. We're in a process with the regulator, Matt. So is that true? Is it true that nothing, you said 21,000? Nothing has been confirmed, Matt, in relation to the children's allowance. We're going over and back with the CEO. We may have to do additional research. What we are finding, though, generally... Sorry, Elizabeth, excuse me, sorry. What I asked you was, is that the figure that you have suggested to the Commission of Energy Regulation, even if it has not been confirmed or agreed? Matt, is that is the figure no that suggests? Matt, there is no figure. We're in a process to determine what the figure should be. As I said, a process to determine what it should be. It cannot be too high, otherwise some customers pay too much. It cannot be too low, because other customers will then pay, pay too much. Okay, We're so you're saying up to 38,000 might be too much. So let's just yes. take the figure of 21,000, the one that was reported in the Irish Times this morning, which you say hasn't been confirmed. What would 21,000 litres give a child? Well, Matt, I, this, 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 it's, it's, it's an academic exercise to go through that. You're assuming, though, that there isn't a trade-off in terms of when people live together. You're assuming that the levels of... of, of I'm not of assuming water. anything. I'm asking you a question as to what that 21,000 litres would give a child. Well, the, the allowance that has to be given to a child has to cover all of their water for free. So whatever the allowance is, it must cover the, 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 all of the water that the children will use. That is an absolute given. And that is something that people need to be very reassured of. In us sending out um, uh, uh, letters to people in September, contacting all of our customers, we need to get information as to how many children are in the house so that we can apply the appropriate level of allowance to that household in order to ensure that the children children are free. That's the process and that is the reason why we would be contacting okay. people and it's the fairest and most appropriate Elizabeth, thing the reason I ask is because it has been reported that 21,000 litres per annum, when you divide it into days it would give a child a shower and a flush of a toilet a day. Matt, as I said, there isn't a confirmed figure. The children must get their water for free. Okay. And why do you need the PPS numbers? Are you afraid that there will be adults making up children to try and claim they have more children in the house than they actually have? 
No, I think actually it's important to, to think when we're giving away the allowances that government are giving, uh, 30,000 litres per household and, and the water free for children, that actually that's a considerable amount of water to be allocated without a charge attached to it. And, and, um, and, and in any, any language is going to be worth an awful lot. So we have to ensure that we're allocating that with the appropriate level of governance around it. Um, and in the allocation of any government allowance or benefit, um, it wouldn't be unusual for a PPS number to be used in order to ensure that the right allowance is going to the right people. So it's is the Data Protection thing. Commissioner allowing you to demand PPS numbers? Well, Matt, the, 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 the process yes that no? we have to go through... Yeah, well, of course. I mean, if the process we have to go through um, has to be in line with data protection legislation. It has to be in line with all of the requirements have that checked? we have as per... Well, if we're in a process of doing that, Matt. We well, haven't actually... <laughs> so you don't know yet uh, whether Matt, you can actually ask for the PPS numbers? Matt, p- the first point to, uh, to, say, to say here, we haven't actually asked yet for PPS numbers. We're in a process to try and determine what is the best way of determining how many people live in a house so that they get the right allowance um, for that household and so that um, that we're not uh, giving too much of an allowance to households at the expense of others. What so if what somebody wouldn't give you your PPS it? number? What even if the Data Protection Commissioner says that yes, you are allowed to look for a PPS number? If somebody decides they don't want to give you a PPS number, would you withhold the water from them? Well, no. I think the, the point to make here is that we actually will be able to bill people um, from the 1st of January irritative of whether there's a response to that. What I would be very sure though is, is that we won't get an accurate bill out to people if we don't have, um, if we don't have the details that people are going to provide, that we're asking people to provide to us. In every case we won't get it right. So we have to, what we have um, at the moment is a database that would have been provided to us under legislation um, we will, can, can build people off that database but what we would prefer to do is to give customers an opportunity to to confirm their details and apply for their allowances so that in as many cases as we can do, we're getting the right bill to the right people. Now, I'll be the first to say, and I'm sure I'll be on again, saying we're not going to get that right in every every single case. We're going to do everything we can to get that right in every single case. Um, and that's going to be part of the process that we're in for September. Um, and we are going to be um, communicating with every house in the country. And even people who are not customers of Irish Water will be getting um, this information. Okay, but hang on. When will so you have this form ready service. by? Because if you're going to be billing people in January for water consumed in October, November and December and this is the important point isn't it that any water yes. used by people in October, November and December they will have to pay for it That's so right. when will they have to have these forms filled out by and returned by? Well, at the moment, the timelines would be that we would be writing to people from September um, and there would be, I think it is now, I'll, I'll stand corrected on this, um, I think it's a four-week window whereby they can come back to us with that um, and that will allow us then to, to start the billing process as accurately as we can do from the start of January. And, and when will you decide the price? Reason, if you're going to be charging for water from the 1st of October, when are we going to be finally told what the price per litre is? Well, if I could just finish the point and I'll get to that because that's an important point also. You, you mentioned at the start that we would also be seeking bank details etc. Um, it would be the normal run of events or course of events for a utility to provide a range of payment mechanisms for customers, one of which would of course be direct debit and that would be very normal for a utility. I do accept though that it is unusual for a utility to be seeking the sorts of details that we will be seeking but then in terms of applying allowances we'll be unique as a utility in terms of the allowances that we have to provide. So just to reassure people in relation to that there will be a range of opportunities and payment mechanisms but they are absolutely at the discretion of the customer. So, well, and um, something else, yeah, so when, when will we know? When will we know the price? So as I said, this Commission for Energy Regulation will, um, are, we're in a process with them. Um, we are, uh, at the, uh, the Commission for Energy Regulation are due to publish the water charges plan for consultation very shortly, um, either in the next week or two. There will be a four week, um, I think it's a four week, and again I stand corrected on that, my apologies, um, public consultation period where people can make their submissions in relation to the charges, the levels of charges that are proposed, the nature of the charges, etc. Um, and then the Commission will, will determine 
determine what the charge will be. So I'd say sometime in early early to mid September at the current timeline that we're on. And I really would encourage people to participate in that public consultation. It's a very very important one. Um, it's one that does affect everybody who's on the public water scheme. So if you're getting water in and if you're discharging wastewater out, um, that consultation will will affect you. And we would encourage people to to participate and be aware of that consultation as it proceeds. From our point of view, our job is to ensure that people um, have the, the have, have an opportunity to p- confirm their details and apply for their allowances so that when we get to January, we are as accurate as we possibly can be in terms of the bills that we, we would send out. Elizabeth Arnott, Head of Communications, Corporate Services for Irish Water. I look forward to talking to you again about this issue. Thank you very much for joining us.